Welcome to Numerical Methods. Today I will start a section on yeah, American Monte Carlo and Bermudan option valuation in the Monte Carlo simulation. So maybe the second part, yeah, valuation of Bermudan options in the Monte Carlo simulation sounds a bit special, but Bermudan options, this is something like an option in an option. And we will later see that this requires a thing that is very hard to calculate in the Monte Carlo simulation. And the next section is then about this thing that is very hard to calculate. And this thing is the conditional expectation operator. And this is sometimes called American Monte Carlo because it is related to value American or Bermudan options. So difference between a Bermudan and American. A Bermudan has discrete exercise times and an American has somewhat a continuum, yeah? but in practice it's also maybe discrete like every day. So as a little motivation, recall the simplicity of our Monte Carlo method when we use it to value financial products. So you have some model primitives. So the quantities generated by your model, uh, for example, these could be the value of a stock at different times, but X could also be a vector. Yeah, It could be an interest rate curve or different stocks, a vector of stock values at different times. And then if you have a financial product, yeah, you have, say, some kind of payoff function that is applied to these model quantities. So that defines just another random variable. You know? Say if this is paid at time TI, yeah, it is the TI payment that depends on your past observation. Yeah? And then the evaluation is very simple. You take that value, you divide it by the value of the numeraire, Okay, you sum up all these numeraire relative values, and then you take the expectation. Monte Carlo means that we will approximate the expectation by averaging over some sample paths. So it means just simulate the sample paths of these model quantities, yeah, the model quantities x here, simulate the sample path, collect all the values that your financial product pays, so sum over all the payments, divide by the numeraire, and average this. For example, if you look to our code for the Asian option, that was a little bit like that. Okay, so that guy was here, Asian option. So we looped here over all averaging times that were related to this Asian option. It means average all the stock values. We collect all the values of the stock at these averaging times. Yeah? We sum them up. We divide them by the number of observations. Okay, so since we write everything in terms of a random variable, yeah, we do not see the loop over all omega. So this is just collect all the values that we have. Then here and for this Asian option, it was just a single uh, payment time, single optionality. We take the maximum of the average minus the strike yeah, and zero. We divide by the numeraire. Okay. And we multiply with the numeraire at the evaluation time. And from this quantity, we take the expectation. Yeah, it looks very nice. Yeah, so you collect all the past observations and just uh, add them up and then take the expectation. So this method appears to be very generic. Yeah, It looks as if you can now value all kinds of financial products. Yeah? The financial product is encoded just here in this function. And whatever payment function we have, whatever payoff function we have, yeah, this allows us to value almost any stream. Yeah. That depends on past observations. However, evaluation that depends on 
the value of future payments. This is in the Monte Carlo simulation. So we are speaking here about the Monte Carlo valuation. This is non-trivial. Okay, and an example where this appears is the Bermudan option. So let's first define the Bermudan option and then have a look at what is the problem associated with the Bermudan option if we try to value it in the Monte Carlo simulation. So this chapter is has actually two parts, though the first part here is about Bermudan options. So we will define the Bermudan option and also discuss how we value the Bermudan option. This is somewhat independent also from the underlying method. Yeah, so it is also valid if it is not a Monte Carlo simulation that is used to calculate the expectation. But of course, I'm going into the direction that I would like to have in the end the value of this Bermudan option as a single unconditional expectation. There's also a nice algorithm that we will study, you know, the backward algorithm that allows us to represent this uh, value. And then the second part is related to calculating the conditional expectation. Yeah? So this part here, uh, starting here with re-simulation, this is then related to calculate the conditional expectation that is required in the valuation of the Bermudan option. Yeah? So estimating a conditional expectation in a Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, so let's define a Bermudan option. So a financial product is called Bermudan if it has multiple exercise dates option. That, so that means there are multiple times, TI, at which the holder of the Bermudan may choose between different payments yeah, or financial product. So he has the right to receive such a payment at one and only one time or receive uh, nothing. So this is now my Bermudan option. So a more formal definition now of the Bermudan option is the following. Given a set of exercise dates, T1 to Tn, oh, this is my set of exercise dates, and a set of underlying financial products, so here V underlying I yeah, should represent a financial product. So this is a corresponding set of financial products, which we will call the underlyings. For example, the V underlying could be just a stock yeah, or S of TI minus K, so like an option, or maximum of S of TI minus K and zero, yeah, so some payment. Yeah, so some something that you can evaluate, say, at the exercise time, TI. So the Bermudan option is now the right to receive at one and only one such exercise time TI, the corresponding underlying, the underlying, or in the end, if since it is just a right yeah, and not an application, or receive nothing. How would you exercise? Yeah, what is your exercise strategy? Yeah, of course, you would exercise if that that you receive now at the exercise time TI has a larger value than what you expect to receive in the future. So if we anticipate this optimal exercise strategy, uh, so that the optimal strategy is to use the maximum between the value that we receive upon exercising and non-exercising, then I can actually define the value of the Bermudan option in the following recursive way. Yeah? So at time TI, so at exercise time TI, I compare the value of the underlying that I would receive if I exercise. Yeah? So this is the value of the product that we receive if we exercise in TI. And what is the value if I don't exercise? Yeah, 
the value if I don't exercise is <clears throat> the value of the Bermuden. So we choose between the underlying and the value of the Bermuden that has the exercise time TI removed. So the future Bermuden, so the Bermuden from TI plus one to TN, yeah, we compare the value of the underlying to the value of that future Bermuden evaluated in TI. And now we take the maximum of the two, yeah, because that's the optimal choice. And this defines now the value of the Bermuden with exercise states TI to TN. So at the last exercise time, we have the choice to receive the last underlying or nothing. So this then initializes the last value for the Bermuden here to zero. So as you see the last Bermuden option is just an option. Yeah, You choose maximum between the underlying and zero. So this is the last one. It's just a European option to choose the maximum of the underlying and zero. And the second last one is then an option to choose between the underlying or an option. So it is an option on an option on an option yeah, when you go backward. Okay, I somewhat steered around the problematic part and that is that we need in the calculation a uh, conditional expectation. And this is hidden actually here in this red time because I need to compare the underlying at TI with the value of the Bermuden that has its first exercise in TI plus one. So you see that this is a backward iteration. So, but for the Bermuden that starts in TI, I have here on the left-hand side, the valuation time TI, but here I have for the Bermuden that starts in TI plus one, the valuation time TI. So to understand this a little bit better, let us look at the simple case of a Bermuden option that has two exercise types. So the option holder has the right to receive say V underlying one in time T1 or wait and receive later the V underlying two in time T2 or receive nothing. So this is a little picture here. So there are here my exercise times T1 and T2. So at the last exercise, I can choose now between the underlying or receive nothing. So that defines the value of the Bermuden here at the exercise date. Okay, so this is maximum of V underlying two observed in T2 and zero. From that, I need to take the valuation. So I need the conditional expectation or the valuation of this yeah, and compare it with the underlying one. And I make this comparison now in T1. So I compare these two values in T1 and that defines then the value of the Bermuden at exercise point T1. So at exercise point T1, I take the maximum of the underlying and the value of the Bermuden, so evaluate this guy. So writing that in formulas looks like that. So at time T2, I have the option to receive the underlying two, yeah, evaluated or observed at T2. So this defines the option in T2. From that option, I now take the value. Uh, so we need to apply a conditional expectation operator value this. So this means divide this quantity by the numeraria and take the conditional expectation conditional to time T1, multiply with the numeraria in time T1. So this defines me now the value of the 
option in time t1. And then I compare this value of the option in time t1 with the underlying that I would receive if I exercise in t1. And this then defines the value of the Bermuden, yeah, which is now an option on an option. Yeah? So it is an option yeah, because I have here the maximum, yeah, choose the maximum of a, of a tool, but an option to choose between the underlying here and another option. Yeah? So the So you see there are or there's always alternation now between take the maximum function, so make the best of the possible choices between exercising and non-exercising, and then on that choice, calculate the value one time step back. So calculate the value one time step back means that we evaluate the value of the future option and then take again the maximum. So take the best possible choices of the value of continuing or the value of the underlying. So to evaluate our exercise criteria, it is necessary to calculate a conditional expectation. The problem is that the calculation of a conditional expectation within a Monte Carlo simulation, this is non-trivial. Okay, so why is this non-trivial? Maybe here with this, let's draw a small picture what we are actually doing. So this is time, and this is my second exercise state, T2. This is my first exercise state T1. And now assume that it is just an option on a stock that we will receive. Yeah? So in my Monte Carlo simulation, I simulate now the stock value. So I have maybe here a Monte Carlo simulation that simulates now the stock value, like that. And now I have to decide, should I choose the underlying? So that's here my queen dot. Or should I choose the value of the option that I receive if I continue? Yeah, how do you value the option that you receive if you continue? So the problem is that this is here a conditional expectation. So it is conditional to where we have arrived in time T1. Either we have arrived here or here. So it is the value that you would observe if you start a Monte Carlo simulation here. Okay, then in if you start a Monte Carlo simulation there, you calculate the value that you observe here. And from that, you take now the conditional expectation, okay, to calculate the, let's draw that here, the value of the option, okay? And then you compare these two dots, the green one and the blue one, that is the conditional expectation. And the same here on top, yeah? You would start your Monte Carlo simulation conditional to here, see what is the value of the option that you receive if you continue, take from that the conditional expectation, okay? and Compare, compare that to the value of the underlying and choose if you exercise or not. So this here involves the conditional expectation operator. And for this conditional expectation, you would need a Monte Carlo simulation with many sample paths. But as you see here in my picture, we only have a single sample path that runs along these lines. So the problem is that I do not have these blue sample paths to calculate the conditional expectation. But let's continue and assume that we can somewhat calculate or estimate 
this uh, conditional expectation and yeah, work a little bit how we would now value the Bermudan option. And then we solve the problem with the conditional expectation later. For example, maybe there's an analytic formula, black black schultz formula, that allows me to calculate this uh, conditional expectation. Like so here for this example, with just two exercise states, this is the case, yeah, because it is just a the last one is just a European option. And if, if this would be a Black Scholes model, the last one is an European option for which I have an analytic form. So in the following section, I will discuss methods that allow me to estimate the conditional expectations efficiently in the Monte Carlo uh, simulation. But before we do this, let's continue on the Bermuden option. So the first thing is, if you go back here, this notation looks a little bit involved, yeah? Because what you have to do is, you take the maximum, yeah? then you have that option value. From that option value, you divide it by the numeraire, you take the conditional expectation, you multiply with the numeraire at the next time point, that gives you the next option value, and this next option value is then moved into the maximum again, so you take the maximum again, and from this you now need to divide with the numeraire at T1, take the conditional expectation to the next time step. And this always divide by the numeraire, take conditional expectation, multiply with the numeraire, this is because we perform risk-neutral valuation where we always divide by the numeraire and then know that the objects are martingales. So this additional step, dividing and multiplying with the numeraire, can be removed if we just consider relative prices from the beginning. So we introduce a shorter notation. So I add a tilde to my prices and then consider the numeraire relative quantities. So this means for my underlying, I will divide by the numeraire. So V underlying I observed, so valued in Tj is divided with the numeraire N of Tj. This then defines the V underlying I tilde evaluated in Tj. And I do the same for my Bermuden. So my Bermuden value of the Bermuden with exercise states from Ti to Tn observed. So valued in Tj. This one is divided with the numeraire Nj and this quantity then I define as V tilde Bermuden I evaluated in Tj. Yeah? So note here that I allow that the quantities that we deal with at exercise time Ti are evaluated at different times, yeah? different earlier times Tj, say, less or equal Ti. If you introduce this notation so that here the argument specifies that we have divided the value by the numeraire, then actually the whole definition of the Bermuden value, or now the numeraire relative Bermuden value, is much simpler. Because you see that in the definition of the maximum, the two values which we compare are evaluated, of course, at the same time. Yeah, We compare the value at Ti. So I just divide here the whole thing with the numeraire at Ti. So this means the numeraire relative Bermuden value is just the maximum of the two numeraire relative values. So moving to relative prices now gives me the very nice backward iteration. So I take the numeraire relative value of the Bermudan with exercise states Ti plus 1 to Ti, yeah, observed in Ti plus 1, so at its first exercise state. From that numeraire relative value, I just now take the conditional expectation, 
So this gives me a numerea relative value because otherwise I would have had divided with the numerea in Ti plus one and multiplied with the numerea in Ti. But since I just divide with the numerea in Ti, this is now the numerea relative value of the Bermuden evaluated in Ti. Now I plug this in and compare it with the numerea relative value of the underlying in Ti. I choose the maximum of the two. And this is now the numerea relative value of the Bermudan that has exercise dates from Ti to Tn. So one more. Huh? So this is the exercise in Ti evaluated in Ti. So you see that we have a nice alternating scheme from go backward with the conditional expectation operator, go backward one time step and apply the maximum operator to choose that you take the maximum between the continuation and the exercise value. So relative prices, numerator relative prices are now marked here with a, with a tilde. So maybe a short remark here on the notation. Yeah. So you see, I have discrete times. So this looks as if I have time discrete stochastic processes. But you have to be a little bit uh, careful. Of course, the process that maps time to V tilde underlying I of that time, this is the numerator relative value process of the I's underlines. The same is true for the V tilde Bermuden I. Yeah? So this is the numerator relative value process of the Bermudan that has exercise from Ti to Tn. Yeah? You can observe these guys for little t, yeah? the values for little t, little t being less or equal Ti. But if you let also the time parameter running, then here this V tilde underlying I observed in TI, this is not a value process of a financial product. It's also not a value process of a numerator relative value of a financial product because you always change the evaluation time and the observed financial product. So these guys they consist of different financial products at different times. Yeah? So you have to be a little bit careful. This here is a martingale, yeah? but this, for example, is not a martingale. Yeah? Also, it is Maria relative. Another remark, let's go back here to this yeah, definition of the value of the Bermuda. This definition anticipates that we perform the optimal exercise strategy. So we choose the maximum of the two values that we that we get. If I write this maximum here, um, a little bit more complicated, then it means, well, the value of the Ben Juden in time Ti is that of the underlying. If the value of the underlying is larger than the value of the conditional expectation of the future Bermuda. Or it is the value of the conditional expectation of the future Bermuda of continuation, if this value here is larger than that value. Okay, this is what the maximum does. So I can write this maximum a little bit more complicated. So we compare the conditional expectation operator here conditional to FTI applied to the Bermuden value that we observed in TI plus one and the Bermuden that has exercise times in TI plus one to TN. I compare this with the value of the underlying at TI. If this conditional expectation is larger than the value of the underlying, I expect that I receive a larger value in the future. So I receive a larger value in the future. I, I take this conditional expectation. 
Otherwise, I take the underlying. So this defines here my maximum function, and this then defines the Bermuden at time ti. So you see, I plug here in the Bermuden with exercise states from ti plus 1 to tn, observed in ti. And this definition here includes the conditional expectation operator and then applies the maximum, defines me then the Bermuden with exercise states from ti to tn, evaluated in, in ti. This formulation here of the whole procedure, this will be relevant later, yeah, we, because I will now reformulate a little bit this procedure. And the nice thing also is that all these reformulations appear to be just the same statement, you know, without any improvement. But in the end, we will see that there's a formulation that allows us a little trick that has, from a numerical method perspective, really a big impact. So this will become relevant later. I can describe my optimal exercise strategy with a different value, and this is now um, a stochastic time. So there is the optimal exercise time T. So a Bermuden option yeah, has been defined, consists of compare the value of the underlying with the evaluation of continuing. So the value of the Bermudan that has exercise rights in TI plus one evaluated in TI. And you would choose the underlying if the value of the underlying is larger. But now we go backward. No? And if we observe at an earlier time that this underlying is even better than what we receive if you, we continue, we would choose that underlying. So the thing is that we will choose the first underlying value where we observe that this value is larger than what we get if we continue in expectation. So we will choose the minimum time of all these exercise states where the value of the underlying is larger than the value of the Bermudan. This is a stochastic time because this comparison here is, of course, different on every sample path. So, on some sample paths, yeah, maybe you will choose the underlying. On another sample path, maybe you choose to continue. Already see this here in this little picture. Maybe if we have walked here down, okay, we observe, ah, oh, it is maybe better to continue. So we continue. So we would exercise maybe in T2. And if we walk here up, yeah, maybe we see, okay, the underlying has a higher value. So the exercise time will be T1. So this guy is a stochastic time. Uh, it may happen that the value of the underlying is nowhere larger than the Bermuden. For example, recall that my definition of the Bermuden is you have the right, but not the obligation, to exercise at one of these times. So if all the underlying have, for example, a negative value yeah, at all the observations, you would not choose any one of these. Yeah. In that case here, this set is empty. And in this case, I just define now my stochastic time as being um, infinity. So uh, we said for the case that where the option is never exercised, we set this T um, of omega to infinity. You could also alternatively include another time in the end where you receive the zero, yeah, and then it's just the maximum of receiving zero and, and whatever. Um, 
that's just a, a little freedom how you define the uh, financial product. This stochastic time defines exactly when we will exercise on our sample paths omega. So it is an equivalent description of the exercise strategy. This is the optimal exercise time on the given sample path omega. With the help of this stochastic time, I can write now the Bermudan option value as a single unconditioned expectation. So the conditional expectation operator is gone. And this is very nice. Yeah. So what do we do? I introduce another time discrete stochastic process. So this here is U tilde of Ti. And U tilde of Ti is the value of the i's underlying observed in Ti. So this is a time discrete stochastic process that corresponds of the numeraire relative values of our underlines, but it's always a different underlying value. Yeah? So it's also not a martingale, but it's a time discrete stochastic process. So I maps to a random variable u tilde of ti. And my claim is that the Bermudan value that has all the exercises evaluated at t0, so at the starting point, this is just my u tilde of t, the stochastic time t. Yeah, okay, I have to describe a little bit what this means. Well, the stochastic time t, if I plug in the sample path omega, it is one of these values ti or it is infinity. If it is one of these values ti, you know, then I know what u tilde of capital T is. It's just the value of the i's underlying. If it is infinity, so if I never exercise, well, then I just define my u tilde of infinity, I define it as zero. Yeah? If you never exercise, you will receive zero. So the thing is that our u tilde of this stochastic time t, this is a random variable. And what random variable is it? So it is the random variable. If I plug in a sample path omega, then I get the u tilde of, okay, I plug in an omega means I also plug in the omega for the t. So t of that omega, so that is some ti. So this is u tilde of some ti you know, on the ti. That means on sample pass omega, I will exercise at time ti. But this is still a random variable you know, because this is now the value of the T of omega, uh, so the Ti's underlying, and I observe this underlying on sample path omega. So this strange thing here is on sample path omega, it is the value of the underlying that you receive at the optimal exercise time that is associated with that sample pass omega. Yeah, this is exactly what the Bermudan will pay you in the on the sample pass omega. The Bermudan is to choose the optimal exercise time. This is choose the capital T of omega. And at that time, you choose the corresponding underlying, so you will receive the V tilde underlying that corresponds to that time of omega.
So since these different TIs are different times, yeah, actually this thing is not FT0 measurable. Yeah, it is a random variable. But now I just take the expectation of this and these guys are all, all numeraire relative. Yeah? They are already all divided by their corresponding numeraire, the numeraire at which we receive this underlying. So I just have a single unconditional expectation. So maybe one needs to do a small proof here for this. So the proof is just write the definition of the Bermuden and your optimal exercise time capital T. Yeah. So the capital T is this decision here. And the definition of the Bermuden is this. So you have this decision here. But then you always apply here the conditional expectation operator. But that can be removed because you have the tower law. Yeah? The expectation of conditional expectation is the expectation. So in the end, you have here also the tower law. OK, so this is a nice description of the Bermuden option value as a single unconditional expectation. Yeah, unconditional expectation, this is easy. Yeah, Just perform now the Monte Carlo simulation. The Monte Carlo simulation of the U tilde. OK, this is maybe easy because it is just simulate all the values of these underlines. OK, maybe you have a vector of different underlines. And the Monte Carlo simulation of this quantity here then selects you know, which value do you choose, which underlying value do you choose on every sample pass. Problem is that the calculation here of this capital T of your stochastic time, this involves the calculation of the conditional expectation. Because this guy here is the value of the Bermuden with exercise times ti plus 1 to tn evaluated at exercise time ti. So this guy is the thing that we have here. It is It in, involves the conditional expectation. Uh, however, there is already a nice little step here. The conditional expectation is now only contained in the decision what to choose. The expectation later is done over all the values that we receive. And this is a really important step. I will comment on this step again. So first, let's give this u tilde of t a name. So this is the option value upon optimal exercise. So the u tilde of t so the u tilde of t is a random variable. So if I plug in a sample pass omega, this is now my, oh, there's a tilde missing. Yeah. So this is now my u tilde on the optimal exercise time evaluated on that sample path. Okay, if you copy the definition from the previous slide, so this is the v underlying. The underlying associated now with the optimal exercise time. So maybe I write T of omega here. Actually, there should be an index I. So now it is a TI. So the underlying that is associated with that time, this underlying evaluated in T of omega. Okay, that is a random variable. That random variable also evaluated on the omega. Such a random variable is called a stop process. So uh, u tilde was a time discrete stochastic process. Yeah, u tilde of ti was the value of the ice underlying observed in ti. And now I plug in my random time, capital T. Yeah, this transforms my time discrete stochastic process to a random variable. Yeah, where the process is always stopped at my uh, random time capital T. So this capital T is then sometimes also called stopping time. Yeah? 
um, a random time is a stopping time if the event um, t is less or equal t i is f t i measurable, which just means that you know when you have stopped or not. Also for the for the Bermudan, this is important. Yeah, I know if I should exercise or not. So all the quantities that we observe have to be f t i measurable if we decide if we should exercise in time ti or not. Yeah, now comes a very important algorithm that allows me to construct this u tilde of capital T yeah, of the random time, this random variable. Yeah? I will construct now this random variable. To some extent, I already had this algorithm when I described how we value the Bermudan because we go backward and we always update our value. So the random variable u tilde of capital T, so this can be derived in a Monte Carlo simulation through the backward algorithm. We need our exercise criteria. So the exercise criteria is the conditional expectation of the Bermudan if we continue larger or smaller than the underlying. And here is the algorithm. I will initialize now a random variable u tilde n plus one to zero. So this is what I get if I never exercise. And then I update now my u tilde i as if the underlying value, sorry, if the underlying value is smaller than the conditional expectation of u tilde i plus 1, then just keep u tilde i plus 1. Otherwise, take the value of the underlying. Yeah, all this that you see here has to be understood pathwise. Yeah? So this is an equation of random variables. So on every sample path, you compare the value of the underlying with the conditional expectation, conditional to FTI on that sample pass, and you either choose then the u tilde i plus one or the underlying. So this gives us, us now a backward induction to construct u tilde i yeah, out of u tilde i plus one. And our induction start is initialize u tilde n plus one with zero. Then if we go backward, I have that the u tilde one, so the one that I have constructed at the first exercise state of my Bermudan, so when all the exercise states have been considered, this is a random variable. If I take then the unconditional expectation of that random variable, so you see this here is an unconditional expectation. If I just take the unconditional expectation of that random variable, this is the value of the Bermudan option in time t0. So this u tilde 1, the guy that is left, this is my u tilde of capital T. You know, with the notation from the previous section. Here's a small picture for what is going on in this algorithm. So you are maybe at the last exercise time, yeah. or if you say, uh, if the exercise states are T1, T2, T3, then T4 is just, you never exercise, yeah. you receive nothing. So you would initialize your, u tilde 4 to 0. Yeah? So you could say that this here is just, oops, u tilde 4 
initialized to zero. And you could say that this last underlying is just equal to zero. But now what happens is always the same. So you take the conditional expectation of the u tilde i plus one. So this is this step here. So I take the conditional expectation. So this is now conditional to f t three. I take this conditional expectation. So in our case, the conditional expectation would be always zero. And then I compare this conditional expectation with the value of the underlying at time t3. And I will update the value to the underlying whenever the underlying is larger than the conditional expectation. If it is smaller, I will keep the previous value. So I go one step further. I compare now the underlying So in this case, is the underlying observed at time t3. So the th underlying associated with exercise in t3 observed in time t3, is this underlying yeah, smaller or larger than the conditional expectation of your random variable u4. So I will update the vector. So this will give me the vector u3, u tilde 3. Now I continue. From that vector, I take again the conditional expectation. I take it to time f2, and I compare this one with now the underlying that we have in time t2. Yeah, so this is my second underlying, the underlying that I receive at time t2, evaluated in time t2, always numerical relative values, so with a tilde. So this guy is now compared to yeah, the conditional expectation of my u3 conditional to time f t2 will form the next update. So here, for example, we observe that for these two values of the underlying, the value of the underlying is larger than what we expect if we continue. So I take these two values of the underlying. Here for the other values, it is better not to exercise. So And I continue and I update again and here it is, this last value is larger yeah, than the conditional expectation. So take this large last value. So this will now generate here this random variable u1, u tilde 1. Yeah, so this guy here is generated by this uh, procedure. And you see that on different sample paths, you have the values of different underlyings, namely always the value of the underlying at the time that corresponds to the optimal exercise time. And of that random variable, we just need to take the unconditional expectation now. So this is a nice and simple backward iteration update rule to create a random variable and then in my Monte Carlo, I just need to calculate expectation of that random variable and I have the value of the Bermuda. However, the problem of calculating the conditional expectation is still there. The problem of calculating the conditional expectation is still here in my decision. Yeah? In order to decide should I exercise or should I not exercise? I need to calculate the conditional expectation of this vector that was received from the update rule in the previous step. So you have this nice little update rule, but in every step you have to evaluate the conditional expectation. However, 
there is a subtle difference and subtle and crucial difference to our previous formulations. So in the previous formulation, this was the one that we had in the beginning. Yeah, Compare the value of the underlying with the value of the conditional expectation and take the maximum of the two. Yeah? So take the conditional expectation if it is has a higher value, so then it's optimal to continue, or take the value of the underlying, if that has a higher value, so it's optimal to exercise. So now you see that the two things I choose between are the underlying value and that random variable that has been updated in the previous time step. Yeah? So still, it is the comparison of the Bermuden value and the underlying value that performs the decision. Yeah? So also here, it is the comparison between the underlying value and the Bermuden value that, perf that represents the decision. But what we had in our previous definition was take the value of the Bermuden or the value of the underlying. So from a mathematical perspective, both give us the same value. Yeah, The unconditional expectation of the quantity that is above yeah, is the same as the value that we have here below because of the tower law yeah, and the way how we construct this. But this little tiny difference has a huge impact on the numerical accuracy. And this becomes now obvious if you just consider the following. What happens if this guy here, our conditional expectation, is just an approximate numerical method yeah, so we do not have a very accurate method to calculate the conditional expectation. I just have, yeah, an approximation, an estimator for it. In that case, here below you have an error in the decision. Yeah, so you base your decision on a possibly wrong value, and you use this wrong value in your maximum function. So you use it in your final value. In the backward algorithm, what we do is we base our decision on a value that is wrong. But what we have here is always the correct value if there is, for example, no numerical error in calculating the underlying. Because you see, what we are doing here is just update this vector, so update the vector that co contains the true values of the underlying that you receive based on your exercise decisions. Yeah? So very important, this vector U tilde only contains the value of the underlying upon optimal exercise, and it does not contain some approximate formula for conditional expectation. So since the Monte Carlo simulation requires some advanced methods yeah, to estimate our conditional expectation, and often these guys are not very accurate, it is really important to reduce the use of these. And also it is very nice yeah, to not have it in the value, but just have it in the decision. So the exercise decision is the only place where we rely on this um, estimate of the conditional expectation. So the following figure illustrates that this has really a big impact. And let's go back now to our example from the introduction. We are just consider a Bermudan option that has two exercise states. So this was here the thing in our introduction. 
a Bermudan option that has two exercise dates. And you see that the last guy is a European option. Yeah. So this is choose between the underlying or zero. Yeah. So this is maximum of the underlying or zero. Assume that the underlying is stock minus K. Yeah. So this would be S of T2 minus K, yeah, say K2. Then this is just a plain European option, a call option. Assume that you are in a Black Schultz model. Then actually you can calculate this value here, the exercise value. You can calculate it analytically. Yeah. So you can calculate this here analytically, and you can make this decision here exact. So your decision has no error. Okay, so this means that we could replace this here with a Black Scholes formula. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful. It is a conditional expectation. So this means it is a Black Scholes formula that has as time to maturity the length of this time interval, yeah? because from T1 to T2, you have the option to receive S of T2 minus K and zero at the end. And the initial value of the stock that enters into Black Scholz formula is the value that you have reached here. So the Black Scholz formula that you use is different at every sample point. It's like plugging in your random variable into a Black Scholz formula gives you now a random variable. So this here is a random variable the value of the option that you observe at this time. But nevertheless, I have an analytic way of calculating this conditional expectation, Black Schultz formula. So if you are in this situation, you could value this Bermudan option here with two exercise dates. You could value it without numerical error in the exercise criteria. You either choose this value, or you choose that value based on S of T1 minus K1 compared to the value of the Black Schultz formula. But what happens if you don't have an analytic formula and this guy has just an estimate? So this is now the situation. Yeah? Situation is here a Bermudan option with two exercise dates. I have exercise time T1 and T2 with strike, say, K1 and K2. So at time T2, I can receive S of T2 minus K2. So this is this thing or nothing. Yeah, It's just the right. Yeah? So I would choose maximum of S of T2 minus K2 and zero. So this is the V2, so the option that I can exercise at time T2, evaluated in time T2. Yeah? So this guy is maximum of S of T2 minus K2 and zero. Then at exercise time T1, I have to compare the value of this payoff here with exercising in T1. So with the option to receive maximum of S of T1 minus K1 and zero. Now you could also write S of T1 minus K1, yeah, because you would... Uh, never exercise if this guy is less than zero because then continuation is always better. Yeah, So actually it doesn't matter if you go here to the left or if you go here down. Yeah, or You could also just write it like this. Yeah? So maybe I modify the picture and say that you receive in time T1 just S of T1 minus k1. Yeah? So then the graph would continue here. Okay. Um, 
yeah, in time t1, you now decide, yeah, should you use s of t1 minus k1, or should you use the value of the future option? Yeah? So the value of the future option is now v2 observed in t1. So this guy is the numeraire in time t1 multiplied with the conditional expectation of the v2 observed in t2 divided by the numeraire in t2 conditional f t1. If you have, for example, an analytic formula, like Black schultz formula, this guy would look like that. Okay, so it would somehow approach here this value. Yeah? It would be like a Black schultz formula. The optimal point to exercise into the underlying is actually here this eta star. Yeah? So at the eta star, this is the optimal point where we flip our decision from choosing the green line so exercise into S of T1 minus K1, or choosing the blue line, choose the option, yeah? because then you maximize the value. Yeah? So this is really the maximum value you choose to continue, or you exercise. Yeah, why is this? Yeah, it is because at the region where this value here is becoming low, Actually, for example, if it is here negative, you would never choose this green value. You would wait because there is some chance that from here, the stock in time T1 moves to say here in time T2. You see, the, this is the value of the stock at both times. Yeah, This is an overlay of the two, Yeah, such that you have a positive payoff. Yeah? So there's still a chance to move to the other side. So such that you receive something from from here. Huh? This is what this blue line uh, tells you. So the optimal exercise strategy is somewhat th this line. But now look what happens if we just have a poor estimate for the conditional expectation. So we just have an estimator, and I do not have the blue line. So this line here, my Black Schultz formula, so this guy here, is not there. And now I have to decide. So I have this line here, which is now the estimate for my conditional expectation. So first, at what value of the stock, yeah? So if the S has moved up, yeah, or down. So if the S have moved up uh, or down, yeah, in the previous uh, picture. So at which value of the stock at T1, I would maybe exercise. So this is the value that we have here. Yeah, because your estimate tells you, okay, if you are below this bound, you receive more if you continue. Your estimate tells you what you receive if you continue. So your estimate tells you also, if you are above here, you receive less than what you get from exercising into the underlying. So you see that at that point, we make a slightly wrong decision. Okay. So we exercise yeah, a little bit too early into the underlying, yeah, already if the stock is quite quite low, yeah, where we should maybe continue. And now you see the big advantage of the backward algorithm with this updating of this random variable. So if we choose the backward algorithm, 
we now have a wrong choice, but we choose between the underlying that we receive in T1 or the underlying that we receive in T2. So I have, of course, to use the numeraire relative underlines. Yeah? So let's consider all the values numeraire relative. In the Bermuden original definition, I would choose now my poor estimate. So if I choose the underlying, I would make a Monte Carlo valuation of this payoff here. But a Monte Carlo valuation of the call option yeah, doesn't have a big error. Yeah? So I could maybe assume that the Monte Carlo valuation of the true payoff gives me this line here. So if I just make a wrong decision, the error that I make is, okay, I choose the underlying in T1, I choose it in T1. I should move now to the other curve, but I go down, I go down, I go down, and now I go to the other curve and choose the blue one. So the error that we make is just this triangle. So the error that we make is just this triangle here. But if you choose also the wrong value, then you also make this error that you choose this value here and you make in addition this error. Now, so if you use your poor estimate as a value, uh, you will get this error in your valuation. If you just use your poor estimate in the decision, you just get this little error here that you have yeah, flipped to the other curve a little bit too early. Okay, This shows you how important this little tiny modification of our backward algorithm is. So now we can value the Bermudan option Given that we have some estimate to yeah, calculate a conditional expectation, yeah? so that we have some numerical method that estimates the conditional expectation. And this is now the topic of the next section. Yeah? We will start very easily, and uh, regression is one of the most famous method. Yeah? So the least square Monte Carlo, the approximation of the conditional expectation was a regression. That was it for today.